Sunday afternoon as the top of the table side hosts Craigie Burn City on the foot of the table. As we have a look, a quick glance of a ladder now. 1 0 are currently five points clear, but still a long way of the season to go. Into our lineups as per usual, George Goss starts his second consecutive game in place of Jamie Garnham. A reshuffle in defence with Winker having returned from suspension that he did receive. Away at Brunswick. With Steph going into defence, it does mean Rami makes his way into the midfield. Pilates has started every game this season. Ross regains his starting spot alongside Fritzis. Up top, in the absence of Barnard Brown, Robbie is there to complement Correa, in which the pair have combined for 15 goals already this season. As we have a look on the bench, there are two substitutes in Dimmy and Gabs Pony, who are both, as well, making their 1-0 debuts on this fine Sunday afternoon. Is it going to be another win on the cards for the hosts? Or will they potentially stumble when we least expect them to? Kicked off. It's had a bit of four seasons in one day, this Melbourne weather these days. One minute it can rain, one minute it can... Have the rising sun, and then it can be overcast in between. Craigie Bird with the early touches, but it is going out. Some may see it as an average start. Craigie Bird from the corner. They go on the far left, and they've got the early goal. Don't think many would have forecasted that to have panned out the way it has. Sloppy start from the home side, but Craigie Burn have got early doors. And potentially an opportunity for growing belief. Pilates in the middle. He's just been the catalyst. He's been the orchestrator a lot this campaign. Robbie is quite stumbling. Going around the box. Pilates. Jack. Steph. To Finn. It's on the top of the box, looking for his avenues. Into the bottom right. Yeah! Instant reply, as we have seen in many instances this season. And Finn Lewis gets yet another goal into his stat pad for the campaign. The twinkle toes against the two Craigie Byrne players. Mm. One all. I have not seen this. In the space of 15 minutes. We've seen in some halves this year, it can be a carnage full of goals. But a strength of 1-0 is their ability to respond. Rami in the middle. He's been that driving force a lot when he does play. Robbie, terrific save from the Craigie Byrne goalkeeper. It made him work for it. Not quite converting the chance they would into their attacking no, third. Starting off with Kavanagh. They had a go. Robbie. This will cross Correo on the other side. And the goals, Fritzis. Goes to the cross. Finds Finn's head. Goes off the woodwork. And Finn doubles his tally for the day. But more importantly, doubles 1 0's lead, in which we would have expected. To have occurred earlier than usual. But it's now happened inside 20 minutes. And some could say it was an aspect of fortune being played out there. It's 2 1 at the moment. Finn with a brace. Finn Lewis on fire. Your defence is terrified. Gabs. 
Going for a cross on the other side. Finding Demi, who's already come off the bench. Deflected, makes it 3-1. And when it rains, it pours. That's a trend that has been transpired thus far. 3-1 in the space of 23 minutes. A delightful response from a home team who are donning the green today. Gabs. Trying to go back to Rami. Now Craigie Byrne could be on the counter-attack. Passing on to the other side. Kavanaugh. In possession, right place, right time. Steph. Kavanaugh. Opening up the space, this wing cut. Turned over from Rami. Craigie Byrne on the spin. Make it 3 2. And that is not. What they were forecasting within that orchestration from 1-0. Craigie Byrne made them pay big time. It's not the first time we've seen a 3-2 bombardment in the space of one half of football from 1-0 this season. Quite recently, away at Docklands 2, where it ended 6-2. Here's Finn, made it a hat-trick. And everything he touches today turns into gold. He may be no Barnard Brown, but some may refer to him as the orange Barnard Brown. But he certainly has the capabilities of being a Barnard Brown himself. 4-2 as we are on the shadows of half time. It's been a fair response, but there's still a lot to work with. I just stood here and said how fucking dog shit that was. I mean it when I say this. That was the doggest fucking shit. That sounds stupid, but it fucking was. Because that was the shittest half of football we played all fucking year. Alright, it starts with me in the back line. My first five minutes was fucking dog shit. And then every single fucking player in the park turned like fucking shit! Alright? This is the shittest team in the fucking league! They conceded 70 fucking goals and they put three on us! That's nothing! Why are we conceding three goals? That's shit! Alright? Our goal difference has gone from 9 to fucking 12! And it's the shittest team in the league! And they're hearing this laughing! They're laughing, they have to fucking say it! Alright? They are dog shit! They're a bunch of middle aged fat fox who can't be asked to play real football, so they play this fucking league! That's shit! Alright? We're better than that! We hold ourselves to a different fucking standard, because we know we're better! We haven't lost the game for a fucking reason! Alright? And that's because we're the best team in this fucking league! And we put that fucking shit out there, it's an embarrassment. Every single one of you should be embarrassed. So fucking am. That is an absolute disgrace. Fucking ridiculous. And I know every one of you feel the same. Because I've played the last ten weeks, minus last week for obvious reasons. And I know what I feel like when I come into a shit heart. And that is the exact fucking feeling that I've come into. Alright, have a fucking look at yourselves. And play different in the next half. Let's put fucking ten on it. Because we know we're good enough. Every single one of you are good enough. Step, shit up. Let's step now. Alright, I've seen you ten fucking bigger blocks than me. Bigger blocks than you, inside and out. Do them dirty and pull it in from 40 yards. Fucking do it. Rummy, you put in fucking clinic after clinic after clinic. Now you better shit up. How do you respond? You respond by fucking doing this. Alright, Jack. We do the doggies up and down, they got no reward. Keep fucking working, it'll come. Same with you, Rob. Yep. Ross. Fucking same. Putting in the effort to get up the wing, one of those crosses, someone's gonna put a head on it. We just keep working, we keep getting better, we fucking clean it up, and it'll come. Every single one of us, myself definitely included, needs to pick it up in this fucking half. Alright? Let's switch on. For the youngsters out there, you can take your headphones out now because, safe to say, that half time speech was proper wild, and they're going straight from the kickoff between Robs and Gabs. Gabs tried to get close into goal, but couldn't quite get his contact onto the ball. And they are not mucking around here. Ross, Robbie, on the left-hand side. Steph, Robbie. Tight roping the touchline. Correa on his right and smashes it in. It ain't no Docklands away, but it certainly is a fine Sunday. And Correo may have got sprayed at the main break, but he has responded emphatically. What a strike to make it 5 2. And he has 1 0 written all over his name. Going in there. 
could have made it another right away, but not quite so. The chances are coming. Robbie going on to the left. Goes against two Craigie Burn players. Still keeps going. Finds the top right hand corner. And makes it 6-2. That could well be the play of the day from the office works end. A beautifully worked team goal. To enhance their advantage. Now the scoreline is probably showing a fair reflection on where the team sit on the ladder. Kavanagh looking to clear it out is Dimmy. With another through ball, here's Robbie to get another one on the score sheet. One on one against the keeper, bottom left this time round. And with 12 minutes to go, they've got an advantage of five goals. One nil. Robbie's burst of pace has proven exhilarating today. Craigie Burn, in for a chance. Ross, guarding the space on his left back pocket. Williams, Kavanaugh, looking to always generate a passage of play. Dimmy, Pilates, Kavanaugh. Going into goal. And he hits a post. It could have been eight. And potentially Kavanaugh's first goal for 1-0 oh. this season. Stefan Winkert. Fritzis. Beautiful link-up play. Stefan again. Rami. Dimmy. Stefan. On the left. Voss, looking to find an opportunity to cross. Goes into the centre, Pilates smashes it in. That was a lot of boom, boom, pow about it. From Tim Powell, ladies, in this instance. To make it. Eight. What's well, a stunning finish. Six minutes to go. It's 1 0 with ball possession to wind down the minutes. Going on to the other side of the ground now from Fritzis to Pilates. And he's still going to potentially make it nine. Still with a twinkle toes. That's what he's so good at. But couldn't quite get the final touch to test the goalkeeper, Stefan. He's been a rock in the middle. Winker did say in his speech about potentially Stefan bombing a 40-yard one. It was close on that instance. The lights of the game now getting dimmed. Craig Moon. Stefan. Stefan again. Terrific second effort. Right place, right time. Rami. Still goes. And very close to potentially add another one. That marks full time. A hiccup at the start, but they responded superb. Bobby, that makes it win number 11. How did you see our performance today? Uh, it was a game of two halves, I reckon. I think first half, shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, I think we just took it too lightly. Um, We've had quite a good run recently. It just goes to show you that anyone can get you on their day. So that first half was absolutely atrocious and we got a bollocking at half time, but we really turned it on in the second half and we're more talkative and we're more clinical. Back on the communication side of it too, did you feel that was probably a big game changer after half time or did you feel it was because we were moving the ball quick? I think it, it all works together. I think when you talk a lot more, you know what's going on around you and on the pitch and the players that are around you, the options that you have, and that talking allows for quicker balls to be played, a lot more, a lot quicker movement and stuff like that. So not only was it more talk talkative, the ball was being played at a much crisper pace. So yeah. Talk us through your goal along the touchline. Oh, wow. Um, last season, if you've kept up with 1-0, I tore my hamstring. So I've been very, very uh, conscious of not going too fast and not stretching my legs. But this year I've worked a lot on my recovery so I could get past it. But I haven't really truly believed. And so once the boys got behind me, I thought, right, I'll go for it. And it was just a matter of getting in front of the defenders and putting it in the back of the net.